Hello and welcome to today's webinar for Quest Diagnostics clients. I'm Corey Alvarez, the West Regional Manager of Revenue Operations for Optum360, supporting Quest Diagnostics. Today we will be reviewing Medicare limited coverage policies and how our new product, eTrailers, will help you resolve those missing information requests in a more efficient manner. We will also discuss how you can use the e-trailers to identify orders that do not meet Medicare coverage rules and the resources Quest provides to help guide your next steps. Lastly, I will provide you with the steps to sign up for e-trailers as well as demonstrate how really easy it is for you to complete an order with missing information electronically. So let's get started. It's complicated, right? That's an understatement. The complexities of navigating through Medicare website and understanding their policies is difficult and time consuming. You have a lot of competing priorities and I know the top two are servicing your patients and assisting your providers. When your providers order testing on a Medicare patient, Medicare expects that the reason for ordering specific tests will meet their guidelines for medical necessity or the patient will be informed of their financial responsibility to pay for that testing. If a test is ordered without a supportive diagnosis, the order must include an advanced beneficiary notice known as an ABN. If an ABN is not obtained, Quest Diagnostics will send a missing information request, known as a trailer, to your office. The information requested on this trailer is required in order for Quest to be paid for performing the testing that was ordered. You know, frequently I'm asked why we call the missing information requests a trailer. Well, we call it a trailer because these requests follow the results. Quest Diagnostics' priority is to get you your results as soon as possible. We do not hold up any results due to missing information. We trust that we'll be able to work together to resolve any missing information or additional information requests on your laboratory orders. Medicare may add, delete, or revise their medical coverage policies on a quarterly basis and Medicare does publish a MLCP coding policy manual. In fact, it's right there on the right-hand side of your screen there. And you can download it from their website, but it's approximately 2,000 pages long, and you would need to keep track of the updates and reprint that large manual at least quarterly. There are many challenges with trying to determine proper coverage, obtaining the proper and complete information for billing, meeting medical necessity edits, and then completing an ABN. On October of 2015, a major change happened with the implementation of ICD-10. I'm sure all of you remember that. When this went into effect, our coding choices for diagnoses went from 14,000 to over 70,000. So our MLCP edits for laboratory testing went from just a few code choices for each test to in some cases, hundreds of choices. This makes using paper lists nearly impossible. Electronic health records were supposed to make our workflow easier and more efficient. And it really has helped modernize our world, but it's come with those added complexities. There are many EHRs to choose from, and some have MLCP edits that can prompt the provider to review those supportive diagnoses for the laboratory testing, while others do not. So Quest Diagnostics has created tools to help streamline your workflow and navigate through these complexities. 
Medicare expects that services provided, including orders for laboratory testing, meet their medical necessity guidelines. A provider must document the intent for ordering lab testing in the patient's medical record along with the diagnoses supporting that order and also provide those supporting codes on the laboratory order. Any additional diagnoses given to Quest after that initial order must also be documented within the patient's medical record. Look, we're really in this together. When there's a Medicare certs audit on laboratory testing, CMS requires a copy of the physician's order, the laboratory results, and the provider's medical record for the date the laboratory testing was ordered. So proper documentation is important for us all. Here is an example of a test having two different coverage policies to consider. A prostate-specific antigen test, also known as a PSA, the test can be ordered for screening purposes or for diagnostic purposes. If ordered for screening purposes, it can only be performed once a year per patient. If ordered for diagnostic purposes, a specific supportive diagnosis is needed to support that testing. So same test with different policies to consider based on the reason for testing. Since it is complex and there are various reasons why a test may not be covered, we believe that patients should be informed in the possibility of any financial liability when it comes to testing prior to performing the tests when feasible. At our patient service centers we call PSCs, we're required to obtain an ABN from the patient when we don't have a supportive diagnosis on the laboratory order. When this happens, Medicare is billed and the patient receives a bill for any tests Medicare did not pay for. And very often, these same patients will call your office, causing you rework or extra time to explain to the patient why they received a bill for testing ordered by the provider. If all testing is ordered for reasons Medicare pays for, Medicare will generally not receive, patients will generally not receive any bill from Quest other than co-pays on certain pathology testing. In addition to national Medicare coverage policies, we also have local coverage policies for additional lab tests. Here is how CMS divides their territories. There are 12 jurisdictions managed by eight different Medicare contractors known as MACs. CMS has created national Medicare necessity policies that all those MACs must follow. CMS then allows each individual MAC to create their own local policies that are based on the ordering practice experience within their specific territory. There are 27 national tests and about 7 to 15 local tests for each region. Our region is covered by Noridian. Adding to the complexity for laboratories is that Medicare jurisdictions are determined not where the patient lives or where the laboratory testing is drawn, but rather where the laboratory testing is performed. Let's look at this. Look, let's look at some of the tools available to assist you with determining medical necessity on your laboratory orders. Our clients may order online these guides to help you with supporting medical necessity. With three easy clicks, you will be able to obtain help with navigating through our website and to review several online resources that will assist you through the process. Starting on the left, you see a Quest Sales Guide. This will have instructions on the use of the tools, 
Then you'll see a Medicare coverage and coding guide, a regional policy list, and then a series of one to two page MLCP reference guides. These guides are available for the most frequently ordered tests. All of these tools are available on our website. They're listed at the bottom, questdiagnostics.com forward slash MLCP. Let's go out and take a peek at one of the MLCP reference guides. This reference guide is for vitamin D. This is one of the most recent tests that was added to our local Medicare coverage policies. Listening to the voice of our customer, our clients wanted a one to two page sheet for the most commonly ordered tests on CMS's MLCP list. This tool will help you zero in on the most common diagnoses a provider would use for these tests. For example, on the vitamin D test, there are really over 300 diagnoses that would help support medical necessity. However, there are only 20 that are used over 80% of the time. So our customers wanted an easy and short reference guide with the most common tests with the most common diagnoses that would support medical necessity. The tool also provides you with ordering limitations and utilization guidelines. And these are available to download on your desktop so you'll have fast and e easy reference to them when you need them. It's important to remember that the Quest reference guides are just that guides that address some commonly ordered scenarios. It may be necessary for you to go out to the CMS website and review the policy in its entirety if the reason for provided for ordering the test is not listed amongst the most common reasons on this guide. So, you can now see how providing a complete order with the necessary supportive diagnoses benefits both the patient and your practice. You can avoid unnecessary rework by preventing trailers and those follow-up calls from our office, which could delay the completion of the order. So the goal is to prevent rework or unnecessary billings to your patients. So you, your patients, and Quest Diagnostics are happy. Everyone has a great experience. That's truly our goal. The most exciting tool available to our clients is our Quantum eTrailer module. This is an online, interactive, and real-time application that will help our clients resolve missing information requests more efficiently. The application allows clients to control their workflow, it has multiple sort options available. Many of our larger clients appreciate the ability to sort the orders by ordering providers or to sort between the diagnosis requests and insurance or demographic requests. This will allow you for different departments or work groups to complete the orders by error type. For example, you could have your coders work the diagnosis requests and your billers work the orders with the missing insurance information. So let's go out and see how easy it is to complete a request for missing information electronically. For your reference, the instructions for the initial registration and our contact information will be found at the end of the presentation. You will find that the initial registration is quick and easy. In some cases, the registration may have already been completed. So after the initial registration, you'll be able to sign directly onto this screen here, the e-trailer application page. When you have incomplete orders, you're going to see that yellow stripe across the screen there. On this slide, you see it underneath that blue arrow. You will follow the instructions and click where it states launch application. 
and then the application will take you to the following screen. This is obviously in a mock-up page for demonstration purposes. In about the middle of the page on the left-hand side there, you'll see your client name and number. Each client has that unique eight-digit client number. Some of you may have more than one client number, so you, if you do have more than one client number, keep in mind that each client number needs to be registered separately to enjoy the benefits of eTrailers for all of your orders. This page indicates that our, there are 10 entries shown, and near the bottom on the left-hand side underneath the name column, you'll see that it says showing 1 to 10, so showing 10 of the orders, of 33. So there is a total of 33 orders there with missing information, and it's going to show you the first 10. What you'll do next is choose the order that you want to complete and you'll click on that order and we'll see what it indicates on that next page. So here's the order that you clicked on. This is the one you've chosen to complete first. Underneath the client number there on the left, you'll see the patient name along with all the information necessary for you to identify that patient and the specific order in question. Do you see that middle box in red there? This indicates the missing information on this particular order. And you'll see here on this order, there are two pieces of missing information, the physician's NPI number and a request to review the order for any additional diagnoses that are documented in your chart that may support the need for the ordered tests. Let's now review the screen where you would enter the diagnosis. At the top here, there are 10 different boxes where you could enter 10 different diagnoses if you need to. But down below under service sum summary, you'll see are the laboratory tests associated with the order for this patient. Do you notice the LCP flag column on the right? And do you see that red box with the Y? This is a, sp this is a specific test that requires the additional supportive diagnosis code. After, you ref after you've reviewed, reviewed that, you can go back up to the diagnosis code box there and you will enter the diagnosis. Do you see that diagnosis code and it has a red box? Once you've entered the diagnosis or as many diagnoses as you need to, do you see that green arrow to the right where it says validate MLCP? You'll next press that to validate the code chosen. What this button will do, it enables the application to bump against all those hundreds of diagnoses on the CMS website in real time. This immediately validates whether medical necessity is established. After you have determined that the diagnosis supports medical necessity, you'll see that second green button there in the, about the middle of the page, um, the middle of the page at the end, and you will sub hit the submit button. If you are unable to locate the documentation that supports medical necessity, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the words additional notes. There's a drop-down menu there that has several options for you. Select one of the choices from the drop-down menu and then hit the Submit button located um, next to that large green arrow at the bottom of the screen. And this will clear the error. Here is a screen that you'll see after you've hit the Submit button. This will tell you that your record was updated successfully. Now let's look at how you would update the ordering provider's NPI number. This is the screen to enter the missing NPI number. On the top left box, you'll see the ordering provider information that was received. In the red box to the right, you'll simply type in the ordering provider's NPI number. Do you notice the purple boxes across the screen? 
Any of the purple boxes that you see can be edited if you find that you need to change the original information that was submitted. For example, in this order, you could look and say, oh, that patient's date of birth should be December, shouldn't be December 24th, it should be November 24th. And then you'll be able to go in and correct that. And then you'd hit the submit button that would be located at the bottom of the screen. When you need to add, update, or change the insurance carrier information on a record, we have this convenient drop-down menu that is alphabetized by the payer name. You can enter as many letters as you need in the drop-down menu to find the correct carrier name. You would choose it, and then you would go ahead and submit that information. Here is the information you will need to set up your eTrailer account if it's not already set up. You do not have to order laboratory testing via Quantum eLabs to use the eTrailer process. You would log on to getcare360.com to get started, and following the prompts will be easy. This is what you'll see on the, init on the initial setup screen. Next, you'll see the registration steps that are listed. And here on this screen is the area where you would fill in the necessary information to set up your account. On the left-hand side is your practice information. On the right-hand side is for your information. Do you see the box that says, I am the physician? Don't check off that box unless you would like your physician to complete the missing information requests. Normally, it's someone in the office that does that on his behalf. You will use the drop-down menu under Requester Role. Press that and you'll see a variety of job titles to choose from. Choose the one closest to your title if you don't find an exact match. You'd enter your name and your email address, and that's it. You see, very easy, user-friendly. Here's our contact number and fax number in case you have additional questions about MLCP or the e-trailer process. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation and that you found it useful and informative. For any additional support or questions, please feel free to reach out to your sales executive or your billing service specialist. They will be glad to schedule a visit with you. I truly appreciate the time you spent with me today. Thank you, and have a great day.